So we've all been there. You worked all week in your shop to make items you think are truly unique. And then you discover on the weekend at a craft market that everyone else is making and selling the same laser engraved coasters and keychains that you are. But that isn't the worst part. The reality is your profit margin was already going to be ridiculously low on these items. You really don't have time for this. So how about making actual time for yourself? In this video, I'll show you how I took one and a half square feet of simple plywood and built this amazing clock. It's a tricky project, but the reward is worth it. So stick around and I'll show you how you can make your own actual time. Let's get going. So I like doing cool things with my lasers and I thought it was definitely time to do an advanced project certainly something more advanced than a, than coasters but also something you could take to a craft market and sell and and make a good chunk of money even though the material costs aren't a whole lot more than a pack of coasters now i've always been fascinated with clocks i just love all the gears ticking away in the, in in a clock and i'm just completely amazed that they started making clocks in the 1300s when nobody even had something as advanced as a scroll saw let alone a laser so I thought it would be an interesting goal in this video to create a clock using nothing but a laser. Now the laser I'm going to use here is the Xtool P2 in part because it's on my workbench, but it's also simple and fast. But I'll call out here that almost any laser that you might have will work as long as it can cut quarter inch plywood fairly cleanly. So that's really all you need. There's a few basic tools like a drill and a hacksaw that you might need, but other than that, it's going to be completely laser work here. Now I'll start by saying that I am not nearly smart enough to design a clock on my own from scratch. Uh, there's just too many gears and and springs and things that to get my head around. So I looked around and I found a clock design named the Genesis Clock. And it was designed almost 20 years ago by an amazing clock designer named Clayton Boyer. And if you haven't heard of him, uh, look him up. He's got some really cool designs. Now... I'm impressed that he could create such intricate clocks uh, given the, the, the time period and it must have taken him weeks to make these things because there were no laser cutters at the time so he all of his designs uh, and plans were done with the assumption that you're going to use a coping saw or a scroll saw to, to cut out all these parts and that just boggles my mind. So I picked up a copy of Clayton's plans for this Genesis clock and I exchanged a few emails with him where he very quickly and very politely answered a lot of my dumb questions. But I set to work to modify his design and capture it all in fusion just to make it easier to cut with a laser. I also took the opportunity to scale this clock down by a factor of two. So mine is half scale compared to what his design has. That when I when it came time to assemble this that is a decision I regretted but the final output looks amazing when it's hanging on the wall and no regrets with the outcome now before I dive in I'll point out that all of these plans as I mentioned they're available from Clayton you can go to his website and I'll put a link in the description down below now really if you want to build one of these Genesis clocks I would I would highly recommend you pick up a set of his plans and his assembly guide there's a whole bunch of tips and tricks in there that I definitely won't be covering in this video as far as tinkering to do all the micro adjustments to get the clock running properly so go buy it it's available on his site and I'll put a link in the description down below so once all the design was done, I just exported individual parts to SVG files for cutout and brought them into XCS. Now Xtool made this really easy to lay out and cut. When I look at the design, you'll see there's uh, sets of colors and each one of these colors is a different assembly. And really, I'm going to do it all at once, but you can do individual uh, assemblies if you want and uh, cut it out that way. It's pretty simple to, to do. Now, this is the six millimeter pieces. There's also some three millimeter pieces. Uh, this is the six, the, the half square foot, and it's all the spool for, for the, the, the string and uh, clicker and things, and as well as the pendulum surfaces. So cut that out as well. And uh, when you're finished, uh, you can lay out all of these assemblies like I did on a desk. So there's the base, the minute hand, the third wheel, the hour hand, the pendulum assembly, and and finally the escapement or the second hand. So 
all in all pretty easy to cut out and that's where the fun starts. Now before we get going uh, I'll point out that I did a bit of minor sanding with 320 grit sandpaper just a couple of swipes in the individual teeth and then across the surface to get rid of any any charring. I also did a balancing and you can see it here where I just run it on a on a in this case a drill bit and look for for balancing problems and if you find that you can if it's small you can sand it a little bit on the back of the wheel otherwise I had to take a drill here and drill out a bit of the material to make it balance. All right it's time to start putting all of this together and we're going to start with the base. So I popped up that assembly in Fusion here and you can see it's just a, a a couple of base plates with a stack of one to n uh, rings around it and those are all cut there's nine thick ones and three three millimeter pieces and then a couple of larger ones for the hour so you can just put it together like this now as far as gluing it up I because I wanted to do everything with quarter inch plywood you have to glue these two base pieces together uh, pretty simple just stack them together now I'm, I'm going to use a couple of scraps of 8 inch uh, brass rod to put in the holes because that's what's going to end up there. And then I'll screw the whole thing down just to some, some scrap plate uh, just to be able to clamp it. So pretty simple to, to get it set up. Now the, as far as the posts, I glued those up separately and I just put them all on a single stack uh, of, on a brass rod and just set them aside to, to, for the glue to cure. And once it did, then I can just put them on in the right places on the base, uh, glue them on. And I'm using standard white glue here rather than something like, like uh, CA super glue. And put it in there and just let it cure. Now, I'm going to stain mine. I want this to look a little, a little nice, especially for the video, but certainly when it's hanging on my wall. So stained it up and we can just put that base aside and we can move on to the next piece. Now I'm not going to go into full detail on, on each of these arbors that are, that are in this clock and there's four of them, but I'll, I'll show you the minute hand because that one is pretty detailed. It's probably the most complex assembly here. So I'll bring up the assembly in Fusion and you can see it's a stack of, of individual components starting with the hand and it's got a cap on it. Then there's a pinion gear and a spacer that are glued to the gear itself. And flipping around to the back, there's, uh, there's a couple of clickers that are used to help with winding. And they're actually glued into the back of the gear. But then there's the, the clicker uh, gear itself plus the spool. Those are glued together separate from the gear. And those are used to wind and they have to float freely uh, relative to the gear. So gluing it all together, I'll glue the clickers in first. And you can see I have the, the ratchet gear in there it's not glued in it's just there to help me get the adjustment right for the for the clickers and you can see once they're they're, they're in there and the glue is hardened uh, how it works it, it, you can freely click one way and then and then locks the other way now as far as the pinion goes the pinion the spacer and the gear itself all have an index hole and all I did was run a, a drill bit through them just to keep them all lined up and that ensures that the pinion uh, is lined up properly relative to the gear. So we can put all of that aside while we do the next piece, which is the spool, the bobbin for the, for the string that holds the weights. And you can see how the, all that fits together. Now the big piece of the pulley has a, has a third hole in it, and that hole is, is where the string goes through. All of those holes across the three of those large pieces have to line up. And then finally we glue the ratchet gear on, and, and that's how it all, it all fits together. So that's the minute hand, and that's the hard one. Now the last thing I wanted to do here is, is glue the hand together and that's just a case of putting the cap on and, and gluing, the, uh, gluing the cap to the hand. And the hand is separate obviously from the gear because the hand is fixed and it, it's the gear that moves and tells you what the time is. So the last one I'm going to cover in detail here is the escape arbor and the reason I'm covering it is because while it's got a typical hand with a spacer all glued together then the gear floating around the back instead of doing what Clayton did where he had a spacer opinion and a spacer I found that too too fragile when I was doing the half sized version of this so I just cut three copies of the pinion and glued them all together like one big gear and that just made things a little bit stronger so after that it's just a case of gluing the hand together and you can see it's two six millimeter pieces because the spacer and the hand are together and uh, then glue the cap on and 
then finally glue all of those pinions together. Now for the pinions and the gear, I'm using standard wood glue rather than CA because I need to take my time to make sure everything's lined up there. And, uh, and after that, it's just glued. Now I am putting this all on a three millimeter threaded rod. And, and then you'll see I have an extra spacer on each end uh, so that I have something for the nut to clamp onto. And that's really just to clamp this down a bit so that I get a good strong bond on, on those pinions and the gear that they're attached to. Now the last two assemblies I'm going to talk about are the hour gear assembly and the third gear assembly. And I'm not going to go into detail for both of them because they're essentially the same. So I show, I'll show you both of them in, in fusion here. The, the beigey colored one is the hour and it's got a hand. The third gear is just a, a, a gear ratio transfer from, from the escape hand to the minute hand. So there's no hand actually on that dial. It's just a little cap and you can see there's a, a gear, a pinion gear on the back of the third gear and then the hour gear just floats free. So I'll show you the hour gear here and we'll glue the, the hand together first, of course. And again, it's just a two, two six millimeter pieces, a sleeve and the, and the actual hand and then, and then the cap gets glued on. And uh, once I get it to stop sticking in my fingers, we can, we can move to the next piece, which is just assembling the gear. And all it is is a post, uh, effectively a, a connector glued to the back of the gear. And, uh, and that's it. Now, the, the third gear I mentioned is very similar. Uh, it does have three pieces on the back. It's got the spacer, the pinion, and another spacer because it has to reach the right height to hit the escape gear on one side, and then the actual big part of the gear uh, connects to the main hand. So those are the two gears. Last two I'm gonna cover, and now we'll get to some of the interesting things as we, as we start to get this clock put together. So now it's time to create the shafts for the clock and, and the shaft is a brass rod, eighth inch brass rod that goes all the way through the base to the bottom and then is tall enough to hold the stack of gear uh, mechanism on top of it as well as an air gap and then the hand or cap. So what I'm going to do here is, is measure, is put an actual piece of brass rod in, assemble everything on top of it and then measure it accurately so I can go cut it. Now I'll leave a little bit extra when I measure because Certainly too long is better than too short. I can always file something shorter. It's much harder to deal with it if the shaft is too short. And I'll show you a couple of them here. I'm going to start with the minute hand. So I'll put a washer on. I'll put the spool on because that's going to be there. Then the gear. And finally, if you look at the hand, it's, it's six millimeters thick, the amount that goes through the shaft. So I'll put a washer, which is my air gap, and then a six millimeter piece on top. And then I'll use my calipers and you'll see that it's about 56 millimeters for me. I'm gonna make it about 57 just to make sure that it's enough. Now, the last one I'll show you here is the pendulum. The pendulum is different because it doesn't have a bunch of, of hard uh, pieces of material on it. It's got a spring followed by the the pallet of the of the clock. So you have to put all of that gingerly together and when you measure you've got to make sure you don't press down on the on the collar that's there which is the thickness of the cap. Now to hold all these these brass shafts in I just used some five minute epoxy slid it down the the, the shaft from the back and then slid the shaft in forward uh, level with the back of the base and that holds it all in. Then I just took some, some 5,000 grit sandpaper, just enough to put a polish on the shafts, and then some silicone lubricant. I sprayed it on a piece of paper towel and just rubbed it on each of the shafts to give them a little extra slip. Now, I wanted all of this mounted nicely, so I, I, I took it and put it on a, a, a stained piece of, of wood, and I'm gonna screw down the pivot hole and uh, and the actual adjuster hole and and that's basically the the real f final base for my clock and now it's time to do the final assembly of the actual clock body so i have to wrap the bobbin i'm going to use this 50 pound test fishing line and uh, I, I cut off about 12 feet of it and and i'm just going to mark the middle with a sharpie because i have to slide it through the center hole of that bobbin and i'm just using a weeding tool to pull it up here and and then I'll slide it through to the middle to that mark I made. 
and when I'm happy with that, I'll, I'll take the top part where the ratchet gear is and I'll wrap that clockwise about 14 times. I think I actually did it 15 here. And then I'll tape that so it doesn't come unraveled because it's, it's a real mess if it does. And then the other side of the bobbin goes around the outside of the bigger spool, which is the hour arbor. And then I can just start assembling here. So uh, I'll, I'll lay down a washer, I'll put down each gear and you can see how easy they turn. And finally the, the hour gear. Now I took the hour gear off here again because there's a small dot on the outside of the, of the, the gear. And that has to line up with that extra hole in the pinion of the minute gear. So you gotta make sure that that lines up. And then I put the spring on and the, and the pallet for the pendulum and put the hands on. And really that's our clock is ready to go. We just need to get the pendulum and the weights put together here. So the last thing to do is to build the pendulum and the weights. And the, the pendulum part itself, we're, I, I put the pallet together. It's really just the center pallet piece with two thin pieces on the outside and just glue them. Now the pendulum is a little more detailed. Uh, glue up the inner piece to one side of the, of the pendulum uh, bob. And you can see I actually have to drill a hole. There's a threaded rod there. So I have to drill a hole through the slider and the bottom of the pendulum. And you can see how it fits together there. Then I put it all on a scale because I want to make sure I don't go too heavy weight with it. And I kind of found the right weight to be, you know, around uh, 30, 32 grams. And then uh, you can see there's a four foot long uh, quarter inch dowel and it goes in there and you just slide the bob on one end and the, the pallet on the other end and that's it. Now the last thing to do is to build the weights and I just chose, I had a thick piece of cardboard tubing uh, which I just put some ends on and then I filled it with divers weight which is just lead chips and put a screw, uh, a, a screw hook on the top of it. Now you build two of these, one is the heavy one and it goes on the, the side closest to the gear and then the other side is the is the the weight that looks like a weight but it's actually empty it's the counterweight and it goes on the other side so that's the clock now i didn't want to trivialize this by showing you that i just cut a bunch of things out with a laser and magically glued everything together and it worked because the reality is this is a very tedious device this is by far the hardest project I've ever built with a laser and it will drive you crazy. But the reward is, is just incredible when you see the clock on the wall and it's ticking away. It just blows your mind. And uh, the way to make that success path better is to go get Clayton Boyer's document for this Genesis clock. I knew nothing about clocks when I started and Clayton, his document helped me find all of these little niglets that were preventing the clock from ticking and solved all of these problems. I'd like to say I now know about 10% of what Clayton knows about clocks. Uh, you'll you get it, you'll learn so much uh, and I can't say enough good things. Now the Xtool P2S that I used to make this clock did a great job here. Uh, because it created gears that were perfectly round within fractions, small fractions of a millimeter accuracy. And that helped a lot. And if you haven't seen the review I did on that laser, uh, click up in the corner and go watch that one. And I'll see you over there. And I'll wind down here and say, get out there, make your world. And I'll see you next time.